We're just going to start with one small one at 25 basis points. And I wouldn't have said this three months ago, but uh, over the course of the last quarter, we've seen manufacturing, which is about a third of the economy, slide in that uh, IHS market survey. So we've come down to the point where manufacturing is no longer growing. It's not declining either. But I think we need to step in and do something for that before it turns into job losses mm -hmm. and starts to hurt the uh, consumer side, the other two-thirds. Randy, is a cut warranted? Uh, well, I don't know if it's warranted, but we're going to get one. And the reason we're going to get one is because what the markets are really looking for is trade certainty, and that isn't going to happen anytime soon. In fact, China has a pretty strong incentive, really, to continue to postpone this thing all the way out until the election of next year, because there's still a possibility President Trump won't get reelected, in which case I think they would see their negotiations being easier. But then again, if he gets elected, they'll have to come to a deal. But there's no reason for them to hurry it along right now. And so this is really the only means by which we have to, to sort of combat this issue. Well, your point there is exactly what the president, I believe, tweeted this morning about, about China and the, and the possibility that they may indeed try and, and, and draw it out. So you see a rate cut as an insurance policy against continued trade uncertainty and the effect that would have on the global and American economies? Yeah, and quite honestly, um, the biggest part of the weakness is not in the domestic economy. It's in the global economy. But surprisingly, you could tie all of those weaknesses, regardless of where you look, either directly or indirectly, back to the U.S.-China trade dispute. So, yes, this is the only way that they can really deal with it. And quite frankly, President Trump also has an incentive to continue to talk about progress being made, even yeah. when a lot of progress is not being made with China, frankly, because if, he, if too much progress gets made, then maybe the Fed decides they don't need to cut rates. On the other hand, if a little bit of progress is being made, the markets don't mm -hmm. go off a cliff. So in a sense, they've both got an incentive to keep this thing going. And um, then the president gets what he wants, yeah. which is essentially a, 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 a rate, rate cut. A rate cut, I suppose, uh, Marianne, would, would inoculate the U.S. economy against uh, the troubles that Randy identifies there for, uh, uh, that, that, that trace back to the trade issues and, and, and general slowing in the global economy. It's not going to fix the global economy. A rate cut isn't going to do a damn thing about the trade uh, issues, but it might provide that insurance. Let's turn the, uh, the conversation to what the heck I should do. Let's assume that the Fed does cut tomorrow, that maybe there's another cut before the end of the year. Where is my target of opportunity in the markets right now? Well, I, I just want to go back to one assumption there, and that is that nothing can be done with the trade talks this week. I still think it's a jump ball. I still think that when you see the declining rate of growth in China and the European Union, uh, the Chinese may be interested right now in uh, getting to some trade uh, progress over there. So, anyways, with that said, um, currently, I think the best opportunity is in health care. I particularly like an Invesco equally weighted health care ETF. And uh, if you look at the earnings of the companies that are coming through in the health care sector, they're doing well. And out of all the sectors in the S&P mm -hmm. 500 right now, they're the only ones that are getting an increase in earnings estimates for the full year.